Classifying mutants based on their power levels have been a long-running idea for Marvel Comics. However, the idea tagged along several doubts and needed clarification with it. How are different powers and abilities categorized into a list of how intense their powers are? And also, what about mutants with more than one ability? There are even ongoing debates about the power levels of certain mutants, and on which class they should be categorized. Also, with the alternate realities, there are different mutant classifications. Hi, and welcome to another Marvelous video. Video, and today, we're going to unwind all the muddled ideas about mutant classification. These biomutative groupings, based on both the type of power and the level, do help us categorize most of the mutants, leaving few debatable characters. So without further delay, let us dive into today's video on mutant classification. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Excuse me, late for work! Coming through! Looking good, Spidey! Hello, New Zeta Level Mutant. The Zeta Level was never really mentioned in any of the realities of the Marvel storyline, but it is now considered a level that might as well include every human. The Zeta level classifies those humans whose succeeding generations are born mutants. It can also include superheroes who are not mutants. Spider-Man can be included in the list, as his daughter is a mutant. Epsilon Level Mutant Following the Greek alphabet, Epsilon Level Mutants are next in the category of power levels. They are the lowest level of mutants mentioned in the Marvel Universe. This class of mutants does not possess any combat level power, and in some cases, their mutant abilities became the very reason for their demise. For example, Sally Floyd's daughter, Minnie. Minnie was a mutant regressing in age, and when her mutant genes became active, she began shrinking. On her fourth birthday, she looked like a six-month-old baby. Epsilon level mutants have unique abilities, but barely have any significant impact on the world. Artie Maddox, the mutant with the ability to communicate via holograms and telepathy, can also be placed on the list. There were a group of mutants that lived in the underground tunnels beneath New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. They were known as the Morlocks, and can be categorized under the category of Epsilon level mutants. With very little or no significant unique ability, these mutants cannot hide their mutant I mean, luck? Delta Level Mutants Like Zeta, Delta Level was never mentioned in the Marvel Universe, but there were a handful of mutants whose qualities failed to place them in Epsilon and Gamma Level. Also, in the Greek alphabet, Delta fits in between Gamma and Epsilon. Delta mutants appear like and might not even know of their mutancy. These individuals have specific powers along with abilities, which are more like traits. An example of a Delta Level mutant would be Cypher, who possessed the ability to understand every language. Domino can also be classified as a Delta Level mutant. Her power is Probability Manipulation, which makes it appear that her luck will never let her down. However, that is not the case with her. If Domino stood on a railway track with a running train coming towards her, she could not expect her luck to save her by derailing the train. When Domino's adrenaline kicks in, she makes Probability win out in her favor. Delta mutants do not have any flaws but are not as strong as Alpha or Beta levels. Following the criteria, there is almost 50% of the mutant population can fall under the category of Delta Level Mutants. Another example of a popular Delta Mutant would be Forge, who possessed the ability to instinctively build and rework machines without knowing what the machine is or how it worked. Callisto can be classified as a Delta Level Mutant. She was born with the ability to intuit the solution to any situation against her opponents. Alani Ryan, aka Lo who possess the ability to pass through solid objects and break them, also falls into this category. Other popular Delta mutants would be Wallflower, with the ability to spread pheromones to control the mood and emotions of others, and Ice Cream, who could transform himself into ice cream of any flavor. Gamma Level Mutants Gamma Level Mutants were quite strong mutants, but they had flaws that often made their daily lives extremely difficult. The best example would be Nightcrawler. Kurt Wagner, aka the Nightcrawler, is quite a powerful mutant with class apart teleportation skills. However, this power came with his altered appearance, which made him look like a demon. After birth, his father was so scared that he wanted to discard the child. He was abandoned by his parents, and as he grew up, people around him despised him out of fear 
here. Unlike other classes, gamma-level mutants, in most cases, could not hide their mutancy from others. Once their mutant genes manifested, it changed their appearance. Beast would certainly fit into this category. Once his powers manifested, he turned into a blue furry animal. Although Beast was a very prominent member of the X-Men with a significant amount of strength, stamina, and speed, he struggled a lot during his initial days of adapting to his mutancy. He had even worked on a cure to suppress his mutant genes. Fred Dukes, aka Blob, is another gamma-level mutant. With his strength and durability, his obese body is also a result of his mutant genes. Then we have Blink, aka Clarice Ferguson, who possessed the ability to create teleportation discs and energy projections. Her mutations transformed her skin into lilac, made her pupils invisible, and transformed her hair color into pink, along with strange facial markings. Another example would be Marrow, who could grow durable skeletal outgrowths from her body. Beta-level mutants. When it comes to beta-level mutants, they are quite similar to alpha mutants, except for the fact that they have some minor flaws. Although this was the same case for gamma-level mutants, they have their points of difference. The dissimilarity between beta and gamma mutants is that the latter's flaws have a negative effect on them, while the former's flaws are minute. Wolverine certainly falls in the list of beta-level mutants, with his flaw being the extra set of bones that work as claws. They are believed to be 10% of the total mutant population and have some big names on the list. In the comics, there is little about beta-level mutants for which there are many characters that are under speculation. The term was introduced by a sentinel that a kid named Justin Seifert had rebuilt. The sentinel classified Agent Brian Reinhardt of the Commission on Superhuman Activities as beta-level mutant. In Earth-295, during the Age of Apocalypse, the mutant prisoners and troops were classified by Apocalypse's services. Anti-mutant bigot Zora Reisman, who had been working in alliance with Apocalypse, commented on two mutants being weaker than alphas and called them Beta and Gamma. Rogue for some time fell into the category of Beta mutants when she could not control her powers. She was later classified as an Alpha level mutant. Alpha Level Mutants Alpha Level Mutants are extremely powerful mutants, and they rank after the Omega and the Beyond Omega Level Mutants. These mutants do not possess any such flaw and have full control of their powers. Several mutants ascended to Alpha Level like, for example, Rogue, after she gained control over her mutant powers. In the mainstream universe, Franklin Richards, Phoenix, Legion, Professor X, Storm, Namor, Sebastian Shaw, Havoc, and Mr. Sinister were classified as Alpha Level Mutants. Later, characters like Kitty, Dazzler, and Colossus were also added. Cyclops' inclusion in the list of Alpha Level Mutants was confirmed in Davis and Kavanaugh's X-Men issue 97, along with Bishop, Mikhail Rasputin, Storm, and Polaris. The same comic also showcased Magneto as an Alpha Level Mutant. On Earth-295, Apocalypse categorized himself as an Alpha Class Mutant. Omega Level Mutants Omega Level is designated to a mutant with no foreseeable upper limit of their power. These mutants are at the best genetic potential of their mutant abilities. Omega Level Mutants can cause widespread destruction and are easily considered a global threat if things turn sour. Most of the Omega Level Mutants possess extremely high power levels and in some cases were immortal. The term Omega Level was first used by FBI agent Fred Duncan and later by Charles Xavier to define ultra-powerful mutants. There were many alpha-level mutants who surpassed their limit and later became classified as omega-level mutants. Later, during the Krakoa era, omega-level mutants were classified and identified by their dominant power, which was deemed to register its limit. Hence the title omega-level was designated to the power and not to the person. To better understand this, let us take the example of Jean Grey. Now, Jean Grey was a telepath and also possessed telekinesis but her telekinesis was way inferior to her power of telepathy. Hence, Jean was known as an Omega-level telepath. Similarly, Elixir's Omega-level power was biokinesis. In an alternate reality of Earth-811, Nimrod classified Phoenix Rachel Summers as a Class Omega. Following the present X-Men continuity, there are 25 Omega-level mutants, namely Jean Grey, Magneto, Elixir, Monarch, Iceman, Mr. M, Stolgid, Lotus, Logos, Genesis, Storm, Sobonar of the Depths, Quentin Quire, Hope Summers, 
Vulcan, Redroot, Proteus, Exodus, Iska the Unbeaten, the Knower, Xylo the First Defender, Legion, Tarn, the Uncaring, Idol, and the Witness. Beyond Omega Level Mutants The term Beyond Omega Level is slightly confusing and does not really define any specific power level. The mutants who were stated to be beyond the Omega Level were marked as being superior to the Omega Level. Now, Omega Level Mutants seemingly do not have an upper limit of their power, and hence bringing in Beyond the Omega Level is like adding one to infinity which still gives the result as infinity. However, it has been observed that in most cases, Omega Level Mutants can impact the world, while Beyond Omega Level Mutants can cause effects on a universal level. The Mad Celestials first used the term from an alternate reality to describe Franklin Richards, who stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Franklin had reality warping capabilities and is known for performing tasks impossible for any other mutant. He had resurrected the mighty Galactus, created several pocket dimensions, acquired galactic telepathy, at a very young age and sent his sister to another dimension. Unknowing, Franklin had simulated his X-Gene via his reality warping capabilities to become special. Gabriel Summers, aka the Vulcan, was also classified as a Beyond Omega level mutant by Charles Xavier. Vulcan's powers were amplified after the events of the M-Day. He could block mutants from using their powers along with various forms of energies. On a planet devoid of atmosphere, Vulcan could fly at the speed of light. Nate Gray, aka the X-Man, was also also considered as a Beyond Omega level mutant. Nate was synthetically engineered by Mr. Sinister and created using the DNA of Cyclops and Jean Grey to defeat Apocalypse on Earth 295. Nate traveled to Earth 616 eventually with the help of a shard of the m crystal. His psionic powers could rival Jean fused with the Phoenix Force, and hence he falls into the classification of Omega level mutants. Later, with the help of the Life Seed, his powers are further amplified, thereby placing him in the list of Beyond Omega Level Mutants. Then we have Matthew Malloy, who learned about his mutant powers after receiving the trauma of losing his wife. Matthew had reality warping abilities, and he was classified as a mutant surpassing the Omega Level by Hank McCoy. Matthew, being a mutant of such immense strength, had one weakness though, and that was his lack of emotional control, which eventually led to losing his control of his powers as well. Marvelous Verdict. So we have to come to the end of our video, and we hope you have liked our content categorizing mutants based on their power levels as an extremely open-ended discussion. There could be numerous debates over it, as many mutants have showcased power levels that easily surpassed higher level mutants. Also in the Marvel continuity, several characters have moved to superior power levels after certain events, which leaves us with the hope of having new Omega and Beyond Omega level mutants. In fact, there are many Omega level mutants who have the potential of becoming beyond Omega level. Please feel free to leave your comments and have a good one. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.